You know, if you are in a place of darkness, all you need is a different word. All you need is a different report. If you've been heavy, if you've been hurting, if you've been, you just need a different word. And uh, so over the next uh, little bit, and I talked about this last week, sometimes we package things in series and all that. It's not so much, it's really not to be a hip or anything like that other than just to say, we're going to talk about this for the next little bit. And we're talking about uh, who God is. We're a series called I Am. You know, G, uh, not Jesus, but Moses was, we talked a moment about this last week where Moses um, He was in the wilderness, and there was a great expanse of time between Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob had his 12 sons, right? And and Joseph went to Egypt, and Joseph, you know, had favor and all that. And and uh, Jacob's family, and Jacob and his sons all moved to Egypt, and they were taken care of, and they began to increase and multiply. And so this is a story, if you want to watch Prince of Egypt by Disney, it's pretty good. Um, It's the Bible, pretty much, mostly. Um, But a great, I mean, really a great uh, take on it. Uh, And so for for hundreds of years, the children of Israel are in Egypt. And then they become, they were blessed. And then they moved from blessing to oppression. And and, and God was being patient. This is the story that God was being patient for the sin of the the Amorites, like the people that had their land to be full. Isn't that cool that God's patient? I mean, I think that's just powerful. And so, um, but here Moses is in, in the wilderness. He's t- tending the sheep. The Lord had raised him up and preserved him in the basket and the whole nine yards, you know. And uh, he tried to deliver his people by his, in his own strength. It didn't work out so well. So he ran into the wilderness. He hide. He forfeited the plan of God. So he thought. And God's like, hey, I'm uh, going to show up in a burning bush. And so he sees a burning bush, and, he, and, and Moses is like, whoa, what, what's, what's going on here? He, he, doesn't, he doesn't think of it so much as a holy moment, the way it's described in Scripture. It's more like... What in the world is all going on over there? That is crazy. It's so hot out here. You know, that bush is burning, but it's not burning. And so he pulls aside, and when the Lord says, when he, the Bible says, when, the, when he saw that he had pulled aside and he had turned away from all being busy, like, and really just like, whoa, what is this? He was open to learn, and God showed up and spoke to him. And from the, from the bush, he spoke to him. And, and it goes on to say that who should I, when he finds out that the Lord's saying, I'm going to send you to deliver uh, my, your people, uh, he's like, well, suppose I go. Suppose I listen to the one speaking from the burning bush, right? Like, I mean, suppose I go. He says, who am I going to tell you that sent me? And he said, I am. I am. And he is. Is what we what he is what and so this what you'll find is from the, from that place he begin he deals with his people in a covenant way, in a covenant way and we know that we talked about this the names of God a little bit last week about Elohim and, and Yahweh and uh, <clears throat> but where you see Elohim mean Creator God you see Yahweh next used um, or. Uh, again, we're not going to get into all of that, but Yahweh, for, for our sake, Yahweh uh, used now in Genesis chapter 2 when he first deals with man. When he starts the dealing with man, he, this is how he refers to himself. Okay, And so you'll find that, we're, and we're going to talk about this for over the next uh, few weeks, is Yahweh or Jehovah is how we say it now. Instead of a Y in a more modern uh, translations, uh, thousands of years ago, but more modern, they replaced the Y with a J. And so instead of, instead of Yehovah, Yehovah, it's Jehovah, right? Um, but we, anyway, so that, that's why we call it Jehovah instead of, um, but it's the word Yahweh. If you see it in the, in, in the Hebrew, if you were to look it up in your Bible where it says Lord and you had a Strong's concordance, you would see Y, um, H W A. I always mess this up. Y H W A or Y W H W. Anyway, it's four letters. They, they leave the vowels out. Okay. Because it's holy, God's name is so holy to not even be spoken. This was the reverence and honor for the Lord. Okay? And so, um, anyway, with that being said, we're going to start this morning by talking about Jesus being the the one that revealed to us who God is. So, look look at this again. This is just kind of our text scripture um, where everything's stemming from. John 17, 26. Jesus is, is praying to the Father for the disciples, and then he's making this declaration, which is an incredibly strong statement. He says, I have declared to them your name. Declared mean 
I have made known to them your name. I have displayed who you are to them. And so this is so cool. When you look back and you look through the Gospels, you can see that God and Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He, 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 he went about doing good, and do, like, but not just doing good. He overturned tables. Right, he led. He led his the disciples oh, by the way of come away into the will. He it's pretty amazing what if you really look at all that Jesus did, and he he did this not on his own accord, but the whole purpose was to display who the Father is, not who he was, but who he is. Je- Jesus, who when he went about doing good and healing all, that's not who God was. That is who God is. It's important for us to know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is. He's the beginning and the end, and he has no end. Who he is hasn't ended. Okay? And so if you see in the word a precedent for things that God, of God's ability, God, then you, you have, he's still the same. This is important for us. But he says, I have, I've declared to them your name, and I will continue to declare it, that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. I, I'm going to highlight on this this morning, and I will continue to uh, declare. I will continue to declare. I bolded, underlined, highlighted that in my Bible. I will continue. And we're going to talk this morning about really the bookends of the names of God. How many of you um, have ever... Uh, when you, whenever you're working on something, it's kind of nice to have a picture of what you're working on. Like, I could talk to you about from A to, 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 to if I, I could t- talk to you about getting this ingredient, this ingredient, this ingredient, this ingredient, this ingredient, but it's always best to communicate, first, we're baking a cake. Or say, um, like, if I say, hey, can you get some of this, some of this, you're like, well, I thought we were going to bake a cake, but what kind of cake? Or, and I tell you to get Cajun seasoning and Cajun this, and you're like, well, what's going on? Crab cake. Okay? Difference, right? So it helps us to understand kind of the bookends or the bigger picture of what God, God is talking about. And we're going to talk this morning about the first name of God that was ever used to, to Abraham, and we see in Jesus. Okay? Abraham, which is Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Did you know Jehovah Jireh in that, in that context is only really used in one place? We sing songs about it, but it's really used in one place. It's the beginning, and then it declares, declared in who Jesus is holy. So it's, this is where, it's one of those things where, you know, like let every word be confirmed in like about two or three, like, like this is where Bible interpretation, you, in order to build doctrine, you can't just take one scripture and be like, well, Judas went and hung himself, go and do thee likewise. And you, you know, you, you, so, but it's because it was declared about who he is and in, in the, in the context and what, what was going on and who Jesus was. So it's not one or two scriptures. It's the entire new Testament or of Jesus. So this is such a foundational thing for you and me to understand this bookend of Jehovah Jireh, the God, the covenant God, the covenant keeping God who provides. Okay. But let me define the word provide. You'll find that this word provide, the God who provides, Jehovah Jireh, the word that is used there is really Yah, Y-A-H, A-A-H, which really means to see. The God who sees. The God who sees, and I want to, um, I think this is, uh, he sees and he will see and he will provide where I can't. The Lord will see to it. Where I, this is what it means. The Lord will provide where I can't. The Lord will see to it. In other words, his, he's a very aware of your and my need. And where you can't bring what you're supposed to bring, the Lord will make sure that he provides what, he, what you can't do. And so we see this, this example in Genesis when, with Abraham. And I want to... Um, Okay, hold on. Let me back up just a moment and give you a couple more scriptures that we're going to build from. Um, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, we see, we see this, that for God said that he let light shine out of darkness. Again, with Jesus, made, he made his light shine into our hearts, and he gave us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Jesus Christ. So when we look to Jesus, we see a bigger and a better picture of who God is. God being spirit, he was revealed to us man in the form of a man. 
And so the Bible tells us that we see his glory when we look at Jesus. This is why Jesus is important, right? Because we see his glory. We see his goodness. When we see, if you want to you see uh, how to deal with something, look what Jesus did. Not what, what would Jesus do. We just had this thing happen this week with the water park. What, this is a, we, it was supposed to rain and tornado and all that kind of stuff. And so at, we get a phone call from the water park. Hey, you want to cancel because there's like this going on. And it was like, there's no alternate date. You'll just have to schedule for next year. And we're like, no, I don't want to do that. And so then it, it was so funny. It's like, let's come into agreement. And then, <clears throat> then Landon texts back he, from last week. We talked about what would Jesus do instead of what did Jesus do versus what would Jesus do. And he said, this looks like a classic case of WDJD. And he spoke to the storm. And I have it on my text thread. We speak to you to go to the north and the south of us. We will have no rain or lightning or thunder. And we will have an awesome family night. And do you know what? I look up at 7 o'clock and I take a screenshot of the storms. Guess where they are? North and south. Not anywhere. Because God cares. Because God hears. But he's given you. You're saying, oh, that's just coincidence. It's not coincidence. This is what the word of God says. You can call it what you want, but if you want the word of God to work for you, you're going to have to come into agreement with it, period. Sometimes the word of God's not working for us because we're not coming under it. We, we're saying, I know more in my 50 years, 15 years, my 25 years, whatever, than the one who ever was and ever will be. Yes. Yeah. And he wrote for you and me wisdom that's not here earthly, but from above. Yeah. And you'll find that everything you're seeing down here is actually being controlled from above. The strife from above. It's not the people. You've got to, we've got to recognize that. So, okay, let's keep going. So he says that we look at Christ. Now, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. Why is it so important for us to know the names of God? A few, I guess probably been a couple months ago, I was speaking on a Sunday morning, and I began to quote the names of God, and it was like deer in the headlights, straight up. Like, you know, like this name, you know, like this name. And it was like, no, I don't really know that name. Okay, that's okay. We forget about names. We might not even know names. So, but it says this. It says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous are to run into, and they're safe there. They're safe there. But this tower is not only a hiding place. It's a place to fight from. It's a place to fight from, but it's a place that is, it's, it's a high place. It's not this low place. You, you remember what Jesus said, that he, uh, or what we see that uh, in Ephesians where Paul said, he, how he raised us up and seated us together with Christ far above. So you've been raised up. This is this picture of the tower. Okay. And, and look at this next verse, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse seven, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out you in one, against you in one way, but they will flee seven ways. You know that there's seven redemptive names of God? Like where he dealt with us redemptively? So these enemies that come at you, they, they come at you one way, but they flee seven ways. And so there's, there's enemies, and you know, it's interesting, <clears throat> most of these enemies are just false prophets. Lack. Sickness. Come on, fear. Come on, these are, these, are th these are things that are telling you something, but God says, I got a name for that. I got a name above that. And it's a tower that you can fight from. If you'll run into this name and you'll say, my God is this, you can come from that name, fight. Thank you, Lord, you are my, you can fight from that place, not from down here, but from above. Okay, now let's keep looking here. Let's go to, um, we're going to look at where Jehovah Jireh is first used, and then we're going to look at how to apply the word of God this morning. I can tell you information, I can tell you who God is, but who, how to make God who he is to you, this is important, because we'll see what Abraham actually had a part to play in, in having God provide. Okay, let's look, we'll look at here in just a moment. Genesis chapter 22, um, verses 13 and 14. Now, um, this is where we see that these two words, instead of the Lord will provide it, it, or, or, or Jehovah Jireh, where they're both put together. Okay. Both of them are put together. And this is, let me give you a little backlog for time's sake this morning. In Genesis chapter 22, um, the Lord comes to Abraham and he says, Hey, you know, your son, Isaac, 
I'm gonna, he's testing his faith is what's actually happening here. And sometimes I think we, you and I have to, there's things that go on in our life. The Lord would like us to grow and find out where our trust is. Where's your trust? I, my trust is in the lottery. I just wish I had a bank account. Well, have you, I mean, I just, I, I want to I wanna do really good on this because then I can just rest in that instead of rest in him. This is the truth. And so when our, when our strength and our trust moves off of him, the blessing no longer is a blessing, it's a curse. You think, I don't want a curse where it would cause me to trust and lead me away from him. This is why he told the Israelites, be careful when you come into a land with, in houses and vineyards you didn't plant, you're drinking from those and you see the goodness of God. Be careful not to what? Forget the Lord your God. So when, when, when the blessing causes me to, to, to leave the one that authored it, it, be, it moves from a blessing. That life of the, that blessing has ended. Right. That's right. But, but that, that blessing can remain as long as the posture of my heart is clear that it's the source. That's right. I don't look to the resource. I look to the source. That's I don't look to the resource like I look to the source. This is what's so, so key. And that, it's a cute rhyming statement. But like if I will look to the source, not my resource, you'll find that I'll have way more peace instead of like in this time. So <clears throat> let's look here. And, and so anyway, so uh, Abraham, uh, the Lord comes to him and says, hey, I want you to offer your son Isaac. We know that Isaac was a child of promise. So we know this is a cool thing. God is always a keeper of his promise. Well, it looks like it's going to die. God is always a keeper of his promise. Okay, so we see here, we come into this place, uh, and the Lord's like, I want you to go to this, this, this mountain, and I want you to offer him to me. Okay? So guess what Abraham does? He gets up the next morning, gets the wood, gets the donkey, gets everything he needs, gets the knife, loads it, Heads out with a couple servants and his boy, and they're on their way, right? And they go and <clears throat> to offer a sacrifice, and I'm just going to jump all the way to verse 13 here. There's a little bit more story. We'll go back to that in a moment, but let's just go all the way to Genesis 22, 13. <clears throat> so now the, the boy has been tied up. He's laid on an altar where there's wood, there's stones, and Abraham has his knife out. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram. And so he's about, okay, let me. So he's about to kill him, and the angel calls out from behind and says, Abraham, Abraham. And he, he's like, huh? Here I am. What? Like, it was God showed up. It, an angel of the Lord is what it says, showed up, and it caught his attention. It was enough to where it stopped what he was doing. And he had to stop, and he looked, and he turned, and he listened to what the word of the Lord was. And when he listened to what the word of the Lord was that was coming from an angel or a messenger. So here's the deal. Angel means messenger. Did you know the Bible even tells us that there's times we entertain angels and we don't know it? Messengers. Did you know, have you ever had someone say, they're such an, what a, you're like an angel, what an angel. They, in other words, someone sent from God. Did you know that if you and I would look, you know, when we look to the one carrying the message and we look to the message, when we hear that, we look to the message, you'll find that in that message, right behind, right in that message is the provision. So he lifted up his eyes. Here's what it says. Abraham lifted his eyes and he looked and behind. So he looked, where did he look? I, I, if you read in your, in your Bible, you'll find in verse 12, 11 and 12 that he looks over towards the angel where that sound's coming from. He looks, and when he looks up, when he says, here I am, and he looks over there, and what he sees is, it doesn't say that he sees the angel, it says he sees the provision. It was in the word. Anyway, and then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram, and he offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the place of the Lord, the Lord will provide. As it is said this day in the mountain of the Lord, it shall be provided. So this is this picture. Maybe some of you know this, this story. If you don't, I would encourage you to go back and read it in detail. Um, but this is where we see Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Now, we see this, this in Jesus, okay? The next day, John chapter 1, 29, this is John the Baptist. Um, John is not the one that wrote this. John the Baptist, the story 
of John the Apostle, but here's John the Baptist in John 1, 29. He looks up, sounds kind of familiar if you would have read right with Abraham. He looked up and he does, what does he see? He looks up and he sees Jesus coming toward him and said, look, everybody look, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. This is this exact picture that you see that you saw in, in Genesis 22 where, where, where God provided a lamb for himself. We're going to see this here in a moment. And here God is again providing a lamb for himself to take away the sins of the world. Why? Because Jehovah Jireh means the Lord who sees. Listen again. And, and the Lord will provide where I can't, the Lord will see to it. That's what would be, instead of just the Lord will provide where I can't, the Lord will see to it. Jehovah, the Lord who, where I can't, he'll see to it. That's powerful. Where you and I can't, he will. Where, and we're going to look at this a little, obviously a little bit deeper here. John chapter 3, uh, verse 16 and 17, we know that, again, the Lord is the one that provided. Let me, I probably should have read Genesis chapters 22, 7, and 8. Mm, instead of paraphrasing. Genesis 22, 7, and 8, if you'll put that up there. Thank you, Lord. This is when uh, Abraham is on his way to, to sacrifice Isaac, and they're on their way. They're at the mountain, and Isaac speaks up and says, hey, I see this, and I see this, but I don't see the lamb. I see we have the wood. I see we have this. I see this. And he's like, uh, but where's the lamb? Okay? And this is what, <clears throat> this is what uh, Abraham says. The Lord himself will provide. He said, he said to his father, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Yes, my son, Abraham replied, The firewood and the wood are here, Isaac said, But where is the lamb for our burnt offering? Where is it? And what, what it was Abraham's answer? God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. This is the beginning. God himself will provide the lamb. God himself will will provide the lamb. This is what we just looked at when John the Baptist looked up and he saw Jesus coming and he said, everybody look, behold the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So you see Jehovah Jireh where he's going to provide what, what Abraham can't. He's going to provide. And now here we see in John that God is going to provide for what we can't. Where I can't provide, the Lord will see to it. I see that you brought the wood. I see that you brought the knife. I see that you got the fire. I see that we're on the way. We're over, but, I, but, where, but where's the lamb? And he says, the Lord himself will provide. God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them continued or went on together. Now, we know that we just read here that, look, behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. But let's look at this. John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. We, we, it says, for God... So love the world. And so this is the Lord will see to it. Jehovah Jireh. You got to understand the Lord that will see to it is because his eyes are on you. God loves you so much. Like he knows the hairs on your head. He, he tells us about uh, the birds of the air and the lilies of the field, all this. But he says, but how much more are you than them? He, he loves you and me. He loves us so much. God so loved the world. John 3, 16. That he gave his only son. He gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. This is something that we were just talking about this week. Did you know God is not looking for reasons to disqualify us? I think that sometimes we can be saved long enough and we, we, we move to the place of Oh, I can do that. No, the Lord provided what I couldn't provide in Jesus. I can't, once I, now that I'm saved, I can't provide for it. I still can't provide for it. You and I, we can't provide for what, what Jesus provided us with. And that is the payment for our, your and my sins. Look at this in Romans chapter 8, 32. So what are we going to say in response to all these things? What are we going to, like when you're, in, when you're in the place of like, I, I got the wood, I got the fire, but the thing, I, I, I can't figure out how to do this. I can't do this. What am I going to say? What am I going to say when I'm in the place of, I'm doing my best, I've done all that I can do, but I can't. I've, here's what I'm going to say. The Lord sees and he's going to see to it that I'm provided for. 
This is what I'm going to say. So what am I going to say to all these things? Romans 8, 32, to response to all these things. And this is an amazing passage, Romans chapter 8, talking about being more than a conqueror. This is a, the, this, this passage, Romans, oh, wow. But he says, in all the things that you got going on in your life, in this passage, talks about a bunch of different things. It talks about things where people are accusing you and telling, you, telling everybody else that you're something that you're not. Some, have you ever been there? They're telling you, and he said, hey, 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 listen, there's going to be things that rise up against you. And, and this is where we get Isaiah 53, 17, where it tells, tells us, uh, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you shall be fall. This is the heritage of the Lord for his children. This is the love of God. But what do you say to the things that are going on where you've done, because here's the deal. Typically, we do what we can do. Is that right? And we're supposed to do what, we're, what we can do. Like, you and I are commanded to carry a message. You and I are to go into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, these signs will follow those that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick. They'll ca-. Like, there's a, a part that we have to play. But he, it's not God's part. My part is not God's part. And he says this, what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare I guess I was in verse 31 the whole time, and I told you 32. And <clears throat> verse 31 says, Then what shall we say in response to all these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Verse 32 says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, freely give us all things? This is a powerful thing to understand, that your and my response is that I have a covenant God who will provide and he will see to what I can't. Thank you, Lord. I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this, this is, there's a place of rest in that, isn't there? Like I can't get this end. It's like when he says, grab that end of that log and you go to pick it up and you know that, you know, have you ever been there where you have your little boy to try to help you lift something and you know, he just wants to help daddy so bad, you know, and it would be a whole lot easier for you just to pick that up and carry it in. But he's like, Daddy, I want to help. So, so he's helping, and he thinks he's doing really good. But really, Dad's got it all. This is how it, this is, how it is. I saw this a TikTok or a, a, something online the other day, and uh, it was this, this dad had his Jeep stuck. Hey, did anybody see this? The dad had the Jeep stuck uh, in, the, in the ditch, and his little boy had a Power Wheels Jeep. And so he got a tow rope. And he hooked the tow rope onto the power wheel Jeep, and he hooked it onto the front of his bumper, like his winch, you know. And that little boy started spinning those wheels and yanking them out and pulling him out of the ditch. Can I tell you, the power wheels didn't pull him out of the ditch. That Jeep is what, this is, this is that picture of our God, our Father, of he's, he's got it. He's, he's looking, he's watching over you. He doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber. He knows the numbers of hairs on your head, he know, like, but you and I, this is, there's a key for you and I to access or for you and I to run into this tower. And it has a lot to do with what you and I say. You'll find that every name we talk about in the next few weeks is it says the name of the Lord. What name? See, here's the thing about a name. A name is given to say it. Caleb, where are you at? If I didn't have Caleb's name, I wouldn't know where he's at. I would never be able to call him back from the wilderness. That's my son. I have to, if he, names are meant to be called. And you shall call him, his name, Emmanuel. You shall call him, like John, like what shall his name be? You're going to name him John. And he, you remember when John the Baptist, you, you're going to call him, or when they, jo, Mary and Joseph, you'll call his name Jesus. You're going to call his, you know what we're going to call him? Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who sees to it. That's what I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him. This is why it's important for us to know who he calls himself. He says, this is who I am. I'm the one that's going to see to it, and I'm going to provide where you can't. And just a newsflash, there's there's a whole lot more you can't than you can. The only you can is I can through him who gives me strength. So he's the one pulling me out, you know, pulling himself out of the ditch, you know. Thank you, Lord. So anyway... Let's keep going here. So here's where it starts. Romans, or not Romans, but Genesis chapter 22, 7 through 8. 
The Lord himself will provide. Is, this, is what, this is the response of Abraham to his son when he says, do you look at all this, see what we see? Like, look at this, and look at this, and look at this, and look at this, and look at this. See how much month we have? See how less money we have? See this? Did you see this? Did you see this? Can you imagine what dad might have felt like in that moment? Shut up, Isaac. Do you, you don't know what I'm going through, but could you just shut up for a moment? Dad, where's the lamb? Uh, don't talk to me right now. This is my, you're my promise. Like, this is, you got to understand, this is a real deal. And, and Isaac's like, look at this, and look at this, and how are we going to do this? And how's this going to work? And how's this going to work? And you know what Abraham had to do? He had to answer. And his answer is what changed the story. It, God's answer to darkness is what changed the story. God's answer to our sin is what changed the story. You know, the Bible tells us that Jesus is the word that became flesh. God's answer, God's word to our is what changed our story. God's word to, to, is still what changes the story. Still. Oh, yeah. Uh, that just sounds uh, fanatical. I'm telling you, let's not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Because it is the power of God unto salvation. You know, the gospel is the good news message. You know the good news? When, when Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me in Luke chapter 4, when he opened the book of Isaiah, he said, here's the good news. Where there was somebody bound, they're loose. Where they were blind, eyes to see. Where there was brokenness, restoration. Where there was lack, a year of the Lord's favor, a year of jubilee, where all debts are paid and excess everywhere. This is, this is the good news. It's not just, let's get everybody to the place of just, somebody say, Jesus uh, paid the price for my sins. That's great. That's great. Because we'll get in. But how about that he came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly according to John chapter 10? Yes. That's right. And you know what? It's so crazy. The one place that it, it, it seems as if when the message of life and an abundant life is fought is in the church. But if I was to tell you Uncle Sam has given you back more money this year, anybody here going to say, no, don't do that. Oh, that just, that, that, that's got to be a mistake. No, what would you say? Woohoo! How about somebody say, woohoo, to the, to the word of God and say, wait a minute, this is what, this is what he said. And maybe part of my reason of not experiencing some of these things is because instead of agreeing with him, I'm in the place of, well, we'll see. Well, it's not what we'll see. The Bible says you speak and you call those things that are not as though they are. If you want to see it, you got to call those things that are not as though they are instead of wait and see. Because if you're in the wait and see, you won't see. And you guess where you're going to stay? In a place of, well, I didn't see it. And God sees it the whole time, and he's made provision for it the whole time. But guess what? Your and my words carry, position, you, position us to where... All right. Ain't none of that in here. But it's true. You know what people need when they're, when they're, they need somebody that has faith. Somebody that could believe God in a situation with them because they know who their God is. So let's know who he is. Otherwise, what do we have? Let's go get some blow pops and jet skis and we, we shut these doors. Man, I, I look, that it gives me two day weekend to hunt. That's four hunts. That's over the course of four four months. Come on, I ain't, I'd be going multi state. <laughs> but the Lord's making me rich and adding and to it because we're we're here for a reason. Yes. We're here. You're here for today for a reason yeah. to be equipped for what to be the hands and feet of Jesus here in this world, carrying the message of what Jehovah, the Lord who will see to it. That's who he is, the name of the Lord. So he said, the Lord himself will provide. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, uh, yes, my son. <laughs> okay, let me read. Let me, this is, let me go ahead and read it. 
Abraham answered, God himself will... Okay, yeah, back one. Thank you. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father, or to his... Sorry, I'm... S- i got to slow down. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them, they went on together. God himself will provide. Look at this in Psalms 27, 13. I want to talk about this for a moment. Um, keep, uh, keep the NIV, and I, and I also want you to put up the New King James or the King James. Or we'll just swap, swap back and forth with this same passage. You've maybe heard this. I would have despaired. I would have despaired if I did not believe I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Anybody ever heard this scripture? I would have despaired. Um, if, I, if I did not believe that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. This is King James. This is Amplified. This is uh, New King James. This is, this is multiple translations. But if you were to look this up, where it says, I would have lost heart or I would have despaired, that's not actually in there. It's, it's italicized. It's italicized. There's this word, there's one little word that is placed before it that they have tried to describe what is going on. And this is why David answered, and here's what he answered. He answered what you see in the NIV right here. He answered, he said, I will see the goodness of the Lord. He didn't say, Man, if I don't see it, I'm gonna despair. I think sometimes we get into that place. No, this word, this word that was before that would just simply meant that David, if you read all of this passage in Psalms 27, David was going through hell, frankly. Just, he had people accusing him, people talking bad about him. Sometimes that's, he had, he had enemies on this side. He had, he had all these things going on. And so guess what he began to do? He began to say who God was to him. And so he, he began, you'll find it. Wow, wow, wow. And it doesn't say in this verse 13 that I would have despaired. It was saying, if I did not say, he's what he, this is what it's saying. I say, I will see the goodness of God. But it's trying to say there was so much pressure that it's trying to create this word picture for you and I to understand that he was under so much that he would have despaired if he hadn't opened his mouth. But it doesn't say that he, well, I mean, that David said, oh, I would despair if I didn't believe. No, it says, I will see the goodness of God. This is what, this is what Abraham said to, to Isaac. I'm going to have a, there, God will provide a lamb. He didn't say, well, I don't know. It's going to be real bad for us if God doesn't come through. I don't know, but it's going to blah, blah, blah. He didn't say, I I don't know, but it's going to be a sad day and I'm going to despair if I don't, you know, thank God we're believers so we can keep going through hell. You know, they say that good old country song, you know, if you're going through hell, keep on going. You might get out before the devil knows you're there. (laughs) Me, 223. You know, like... No, what does it say? I'll see the goodness of God. So when I'm in these things, I'll see the goodness. This is, it's, it matters what you say. What shall we say to all these things? God is for me. Who can be against me? What shall I say to all these things? I'm more than a conqueror through him. What shall I say? You should answer and you should say what God says about himself. You should run into the name of the Lord and it's the redemptive name. Though the enemy comes at you in seven different ways, he'll leave. Lack will leave. Fear will leave. Sickness will leave. When we know to how to re- respond to adversity to the enemy. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Statement of faith. Yeah. Mm. God will see to what I can't. Jehovah Jireh. So, this is where I want us to practice here today. Not just to say but to see. You know, it's interesting. You talk about what you look at. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you ever had a thing where you had it whooped? 
You know, like let's, let's say maybe you got yourself into a place of peace. Maybe you put on some word and you were hearing what God was saying. You know, you're hearing promises or, you know, you went outside and you let creation speak to you. It speaks of the glory of God and you just find yourself in a place of peace, you know. Even though there's great adversity and there's like a peace that passes understanding that's guarding your heart and your mind, you're like, wow, this is amazing. Because you've casted your care on the Lord. The Bible tells us this, that you know, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication or petition, let your, and the peace of God this is, it will, 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 will just surround you. So you prayed, you asked the Lord, but then you come back in. Or you shut off that deal and you get in the car and you, you're in a conversation with somebody and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, that peace, <laughs> it's gone. It's just like, I don't know, that which was so present, like the manifest present peace, that, like it's there. It, 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 you, it's undeniable. It's gone. Why did it leave? Because we were looking with different eyes for a little while. And then we move back to looking with these eyes or yeah. listening with these ears. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is why we pray Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened and that you would know the hope to which you're called. That you would, the eyes of your heart, this is the eyes of your heart. Did you know you have eyes in your heart? Did you know that this is how God wants you to look at your life? Did you know this is how God wants you to look at your woman? The girl you're supposed to marry, the guy you're supposed to marry, not just her legs and not just her face or any other part. You know how you're to look at her? With your heart. Is this the one? Because these eyes might be saying, ding, 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 winner, 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 chicken dinner. And the Lord's like, nope. Guys, this is how, girls, this is how, this is how you lead a job. This is how you choose a church. You don't choose it because of the lights on the stage or your friends that are, you don't, you choose it because your heart. This is how you, this is how you make every decision in your life. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that the, the, the spirit of man, the heart, the, the inner man of the heart, the hidden man of the heart is the candle of the Lord. This is how he leads us. The children of God are led by the spirit of God, which he is right here. Can the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of you and me. Okay, so, so it's important that we would pray, Lord, let the eyes of our heart be enlightened and that we would know the picture to which we've been called. That we would, we're, we're praying, let my eyes be the lead of my life. The eyes of my heart be the lead of my life. This is the most amazing thing. In business, when you go into a job, and I, I was a painting contractor and, and a construction contract for, for a number of years. The Lord really blessed my business, okay? But you know, it was the Lord. Because I would go into a job and the Lord's like, yeah, you don't want this one. It looks great, but it's just like, uh-uh, I get a check. I can't see it. I can't see what, no, it looks like this. What are you saying? Look at this. That's not it. Like, and you know, I can't tell you the number of times that somebody, a friend of mine, to end up getting that job or taking that job, and this is like, bro, this has just been a nightmare. I'm like, thank you, Lord. I've also been in the jobs, the Lord's like, bid it for hire. Bid it for less. Like, you didn't, I didn't bid a job just based on what it was worth. I bid a job based on what the Lord had asked me to bid the job for. You're saying, that sounds ultra spiritual. Well, you are a spirit. Well, you are a spirit, and the children of God are to be led by the Spirit of God. So check here. So check here. So when you check here, what you'll find, if we look here, it'll change how we talk. Now look at this. Proverbs chapter 3, 5 through 6. Maybe we've heard this scripture before, but let's look at it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. This is where you and I got to put greater weight. Like full on, like... Like all of it, not just in case it gets kicked out. But no, it actually means to put your full weight on. Put your full weight on the Lord. How do you do that? In your heart. Not with my eyes, but I don't lean to my understanding. I don't lean to what my natural eyes see. I lean to the heart. Next verse. 
In all your ways, submit to him. How does he lead you? How does a child of God, a child of God is led by the Spirit of God. Lead to, this is where he speaks to you. He doesn't speak to you. Now, he, Gideon he used a fleece. Well, if this piece of fuzz has uh, dew on it in the morning, then I know I heard from the Lord. If it didn't, and it's like, okay, well, it had dew on it in the morning. I must have heard. Well, no, no, no. Now, tomorrow morning, if it doesn't have dew. Okay, here's one for you. If a red car drives by in the next five seconds, if I look, open my eyes, and they're looking at me, then I know it's the Lord. No, no, no. That's not how you know. How do you know? Right here. If, if, if I have favor and the Lord opens a door uh, for me to say something, then I'll say something. Really? Because here's what I found. There's a lot of times people get a witness in the heart to say something, and they don't see that everything's ready to open. But it would be you saying something that would actually cause somebody to break free. Well, if they turn, if they turn, uh, turn away from walking off that cliff, then I'll say something. How about, how about we are led by here instead of pressure? Or how they might, how you think, you understand, you think they might perceive something. Let's be led as a child of God, by the Spirit of God, and let's lean and put our full trust back to the eyes of our heart and say, Lord, I thank you that you're leading me today. And this is why when you read the Scripture, if you're reading it and you're only understanding it here and not listening here, you'll hate it. Because this word's a spirit in their life. Right here. He'll say, he'll say things to you that aren't written there. And even today, when you're sitting here, I didn't say some of the stuff that you heard. Why? Because God was talking to you here. So, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him or come under what he says, and he'll make your path straight. He'll take a path that's crooked, and you don't know how you're going to get from here to here to here to here, and he'll say, just right over here. And you'll say, okay, <laughs> wow, you're amazing. Yep. So, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Hmm. Isn't it interesting? When there's adversity, what does it cause you to do? Lose heart. Give up. Quit. The strength of you. The strength of you? Have you ever seen somebody in a coffin? That's not them, is it? It's a body. But that's not them. As good as, a, as, good as they do to... It's not them. Because your, their spirit, your heart, the strength of who you are... This is what happens when you and I when we are in adversity. The strength of who you are gets zapped. The strength of who you are and where God speaks to you and where you navigate your life by, this is what's under attack. When you know how you should respond, but bless God, I ought to just rip their heads off those because I'm under adversity and I'm being punched and prodded. And so I'm going to respond this way. Instead of responding, you know, hey, you know it's going to be all right. Why? How can you say it's going to be all right? Do you not see? Do you not hear? Do you not blah, blah, blah? How can you say? Here's how I can say. Because I trust in the Lord with all my heart. And I'm not going to yield. And I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give over. I'm not going to lose. But I'm going to hold tight to my heart. I'm going to heart, guard my heart. I'm going to guard my heart in those words that are good. Why? Because he says this, though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we're renewed by day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So here's what we do. If I don't want to lose heart, I don't fix my eyes on the things that are seen. But I look at what is unseen. You can't look at unseen with these eyes. i got to look with these eyes. So I look with, uh, with the eyes of my heart at the unseen, and that, from that place is where I speak from. That's right. That's right. Look from here and speak from here. He says, I, I, I fix my eyes not on that which is seen, but unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Let me just tell you, everything that you see can change. Oh, I'm sorry. You got a bad doctor's report? Let me, this would be, wouldn't this be great news? 
Oh, yeah, you have stage six cancer. Uh, you have two months to live. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Mr. John. Um, I got to call you real quick. You just left the hospital. What, I only have one month to live? No, I just, I, I, um, I'm sorry. There's been a terrible mistake. We mixed up uh, your files. It, it wasn't John Doe. It was John Go. And, and uh, actually, you just had a bad case of gas. <laughs> it's, it can change. What you see can change. What you see can change. What, what you see can change. This is also why you having a lot of money is a poor place to trust. Because it can change. This is also why when you think everything is great because everything looks great, it can change. So what we don't do is we don't fix our eyes on the things that are seen. Right. But instead we fix our eyes here. And this is what navigates our life. That's right. And this is where we speak from. And this is where Abraham spoke from. Isaac said, look at here, look at here, look at here. There's wood, there's this. Well, where do you see? He said, I know my God. The Lord will provide. The same way he provided here. Like, I, know, I know the Lord will provide for himself a lamb. And he did. In the same way that he started, he finishes. And so I wanted this morning, I wanted to receive communion. <clears throat> so if you'll go ahead, and, go ahead and open that now. And as we do, I want to read to you um, Psalms 23, 5 and 6. It says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. What I had seen in my heart this morning was that I would read out of Isaiah 53, um, and we would, we would be seated at, seated at a table. And, uh, and the table that we're seated at this morning is not your dining room table. It's at the table of the Lord. It's at the table where he's, cause again, we're talking Jehovah, the covenant-keeping God. This right here, this cracker and this blood represents a covenant. This was Jesus. He, on the last night, he took this. He took bread and he broke it and he took a cup and he said, this is a covenant I'm making with you. He said, do this as long as, as, long as you live. Remember me and take this communion coming together in covenant with him. And so what I had seen is, is this, this reminder of sitting at a table in the presence of your enemies. Now, whatever enemy it, it, it might be, lack, sickness, strife, fear, depression, like what, whatever enemy that you're facing that you've been wrestling, I, I saw this, the picture like this. The Lord prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. But this is not how you look. The reason you know your enemies are there it's because you look like this. Because you look with this. So you're, diff you're not, it's bad. It's going to be bad. You don't look, you, you, you sit at the table and you sit before and your enemies have to watch. <laughs> you eat. He didn't say, I made a spread for everybody to sit and eat at. He said, they're going to have to watch you eat. Head up, shoulders back, smile on your face, joy in your heart. And there's a reason why. Because Jesus paid the price where we couldn't. So now what you deserve is what Jesus deserves. Your victory is his victory. And so I, I, here's what I saw this morning. I saw us just closing our eyes in a moment, and I'm going to read, not word for word, but Isaiah chapter 53. Some of it I'm going to kind of paraphrase a little to get out some of the these and the hows and those kind of things, but I just, I just saw us closing our eyes and listening to the price that Jesus paid that was all-encompassing. 
And it was the one who provides not just finances, but provides in every way where you can. And there's something that we say to him today. You see and you provide. I thank you that you see. Lord, teach us to see with these eyes today. Let us be led with these eyes. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to close our eyes and we're just going to look and listen. We're going to see the table before us. We're going to see our enemies and we're going to lift our head. I just want you to see you, you, you at that table with your head lifted. And I want you to take that cup and I want you to take the bread. And I first want to take the bread. And before I read in, in the cup, I want to receive communion and then I'm going to read. I'm going to take this, this bread, this cracker that represents the body that was beaten and broken, whose punishment was, our punishment was placed on Jesus. He took what we couldn't. He paid the price. And so, Father, we just take this, we break this bread this morning, and we eat it, and we receive what you've done. We, this is why we drink it. This is why we, we eat it, because if we come under, we receive it. We make it our own, what you have done for us by paying the price with your body. Thank you, Lord. That you're a covenant, God. And you took a cup. And you said, I'm going to make a covenant with you. I'm going to make an agreement with you that's going to be in my blood. It'll wash you. It'll cleanse you. It's the only way. And so today, Lord, we receive the only way. And we, we approach tomorrow according to the, the blood. We overcome tomorrow by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We overcome because you overcame. And we receive victory in Christ as we receive your blood. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Now, as you, with your eyes closed, as you're seated at the table... I'm going to read about the lamb that was slain, that the Lord provided. Head head up, eyes bright. What you see with yourself, head up, eyes bright. Enemies trembling. Who has believed this message? To whom has the Lord been revealed? Jesus grew up before him like a, tender, like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. His appearance was not that what we would desire. But instead, he was despised. He was rejected by mankind. He suffered. He was very familiar with pain. Like one from which people hid their faces, he was despised, held in low esteem, But even still, he stepped up and he took our pain and he bore our suffering. He took a punishment for us by God, afflicted, pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our sins and shortcomings. The punishment that brought us peace that punishment was placed on him. His wounds were the price for our healing. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each one of us often turns away. But the Lord laid on him our iniquity and our sin. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was blamed in bad mouth, yet he said nothing. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears, he was silent. He did not open his mouth. Oppression and judgment were put upon him. He was cut off from the land of the living, like we were to be. For the transgression of his people, he was punished, and he was assigned a grave with the wicked. And with the rich, 
in his death. Although he had done no violence, although he had told no lies, he was deceitful in no way. Yet, it was the Lord's will to crush him for us, to cause him to suffer, so that through his payment for our sins, we could find life, that our days would be prolonged, that we could prosper at his hand. The will of the Lord is that we would prosper at his hand. After he suffered, God was satisfied knowing that a righteous way had been fulfilled. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great and he will divide the spoils with the strong because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sins of many and made the intercession for our transgression. He interceded for us. You know what that's called? He stood in the way. You know what that's called? He provided where I couldn't. You know what? He provided for himself a lamb, a payment for you and me. Listen, if he was not willing to spare his own son, what else will he not surely and freely give to you? What do you say about the things that you face? We got to say something. You know what we need to say? We need to say what God says. We need to call him who he says he is. And we need to learn to look with these eyes of this heart. And you'll find that temporary things change temporary things are subject, always subject to eternal things. Amen. Let's stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, if you're here this morning and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I don't want to close the service this morning without giving an opportunity to receive Jesus. You know, we're not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of salvation is Jesus paid the price is what this was about. He paid the price where you and I couldn't. And if you've never called upon Jesus and believed in him for your salvation, this is a great opportunity to just give, to lift your hand tall and strong and say, I want to give my life to Jesus today. If you're here today, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. I want you to lift your hand and I want you to call you down front here and I want to pray with you to receive Jesus. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, that you would be born again. It's with your heart you believe, but it's with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if there's anybody here with your hands lifted, hand lifted, real loud and strong and tall and big and bold and proud. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, you can always come to the Lord. You know, um, I'm not going to do this uh, this morning in, in here. You know, because sometimes I think we feel like we have to wait to get to church to come back to the Lord. So I don't want to always set that precedent. If you mess up, the Bible says that you come to him and he's faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You, you, all you have to do is, from your heart, repent. Just call out to him. Come to that throne of grace and receive that mercy and help in time of need. And it just comes out from your heart. I'm going to close with this. The way you appropriate all of salvation is you believe in your heart and you say with your mouth. If what you believe is not enough to move your mouth, you better check and examine what you believe. This is why it's so important for you and I to confess Jesus as Lord in front of people. Because I've heard people say, well, are they even saved? Well, I don't know. Are you saved? Who's your Lord? Is Jesus your Lord? He's my Lord. Okay. Then they're saved. If it's enough to move your mouth, I'm telling you, move your mouth. If it's not moving your mouth, check what you believe. If it's not moving your mouth, strengthen your belief. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. We will see you on Wednesday.